In this video, we're going to walk through applying a workflow to a lead or to a shoot in Sprout. In the last video, we walked through creating it and the mechanics of how you actually create a workflow in the automation section of Sprout. We also talked a little bit about the big whiteboard and how you might want to map out your workflow ahead of time or doing it on a piece of paper and doing it void of any software and then taking that and applying it into Sprout and building out the workflow. It's a much better workflow for doing that. But now let's talk a little bit about how do you actually take these things that you've built in Sprout? How do you take these workflows that you've built in the settings section of Sprout and apply them to leads or apply them to shoots? Let's run through a few different ways to do that now. I have Sprout open here and just to quickly recap, if I go into settings and I go into automation and then lead workflows, I have one lead workflow here and then I have one shoot workflow here. Now, while I'm in here, the first way to apply a lead workflow is to do it automatically. You can create default workflows here in Sprout and you can see here there's a new default workflow button. If I click this, basically what you're telling Sprout to do in this case is you're saying, hey, apply a specific workflow for any new specific shoot type leads. So for example, I can say, hey, I want to apply the wedding lead workflow, the one that I've got right here, for any new wedding leads. So basically when I do this now, every time I add a new wedding lead, whether it be just via adding it manually in here, or whether it be a contact form, or whether it be via Zapier, however I add a wedding lead, it's automatically going to have this wedding lead workflow applied to it. So that's one way to apply a workflow. The second way to apply a workflow is to do it from a workflow. And you saw this in the last video where at the end of this, I said, as soon as this lead becomes a shoot, then apply this shoot workflow. So you can have workflows that apply workflows. And so that's the second way to apply workflows or to build this really beautiful complex web of workflows by having workflows applied workflows. How many times can I say workflows in one sentence? But that's that's how that's another way. That's number number two. The second way that you can apply workflows. The third way is let's go back on over here and let's go into the lead section. Um, and we're going to go ahead and close out of these that keep coming up. Uh, you can do it via the list page. So you can actually select. Let's say that maybe you hadn't had a chance to do this yet. And now after watching this video, you're ready to do this, and you now build out your workflows and you want to apply them to a whole bunch of leads. Heck, maybe you even want to apply them to all your leads. You can click those, you can click bulk actions, and you can say apply workflow and then choose the workflow that you want to apply right now to all of these leads. So that's another great way to apply workflows. And you can do the exact same thing on the shoots list page here as well. And again, you don't necessarily have to click all. You can just click one if you'd like um, or multiple, whatever makes sense, and then click the apply workflow and choose the workflow there. Again, just keeping in mind that leads will only be able to have lead workflows applied. There's my lead workflow and shoots will only be able to have shoot workflows applied. So that's the next way to apply workflows. Let's go on into a lead here and show a few other ways to do it. Um, first of all, you could click the quick add button up here, click add, and then you could click the apply workflow right here. That's going to apply the workflow just to this lead. And there's my lead workflow right there. I could go ahead and apply that right from this page. The other way is to go into the dates and tasks section here and click the apply workflow button. And when I click that, I could apply it there. And the final way <laughs> to apply a workflow is if I go into a booking proposal here and we've got a whole lesson on building out workflow or building out booking proposals and how all this works. So I'm not gonna go into all the nuances of this side. But you may recall from the right side over here, there's this shoot workflow section. So I can apply a shoot workflow to this lead once they're converted into a shoot. So if you remember back in the lead workflow that we had built together, I had added a step in that lead workflow to apply a shoot workflow once it gets booked. That's one way to do it. This is the other way to do the exact same thing. I could apply a shoot workflow right here once this lead is booked into a shoot, it will apply this shoot workflow for them. So those are the few different ways to add workflows into leads or into shoots. Let's now actually go ahead and add one to this lead so we can see what it looks like in here. So I'm gonna go ahead up here, I'm gonna say apply a workflow. I'm going to say this is the workflow I want to apply. This is a step here that comes up that lets you actually 
include or remove certain steps. So if you're adding a workflow to a lead that you're already halfway through the experience with, or if you're adding it to a shoot that you've already done all those initial things to, you can go ahead and turn certain steps off uh, or leave them all on, it's totally up to you. So you can do that when you're doing it manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and press next steps. This is just a step that confirms, hey, this is what's about to happen. Are you good with this? We're gonna go ahead and press yes, we're good. I'm gonna apply the workflow. And now you can see all of those things were now added in here. Now the thing that's important to note is at this point, the workflow and the lead are now detached. The workflow basically came in, did its thing, it applied the, the text message uh, uh, reminder here, it applied the email, it applied the statuses, it would have done all that work, and then it basically left. So anything that I now do, if I go edit my main workflow, it will not update this lead. That was an intentional decision because we wouldn't want you applying these, these workflows to dozens and dozens of leads and dozens and dozens of shoots, and then one simple change in the settings could then potentially go and impact all of those things if you didn't want it to. So at this point, it's detached from that main master workflow. So you can make changes, adjustments, delete it. Nothing gets affected on your leads. Once you apply it, it's now on the lead. So this kind of just gives me an indication of what's happening here from sort of a timeline perspective. So I can see here when the lead was added, I've got this checkbox here to do. I've got an email, and as soon as that email goes out, it's gonna change the status. And I have another checkbox over here. And then there's this other section down here that says, hey, when these things are gonna happen, which there's no time for, because it doesn't matter, it, I don't know when they're gonna happen, uh, these things are going to happen here. So you can kind of see a quick overview of what's happening. And if I go to my overview section here on the lead, I can also see in this timeline what's happening and what's coming up for this specific lead. So I can see everything that's going on. And further to that, I can actually click over here into the overview section and also see if I expand these, I can see all of the details of what's happening. And this is where I was saying it's really helpful to have this built out um, in, your, uh, in your workflow because you can basically see everything that's happening in your business right here. And you can edit them, you can delete them, you can so on and so forth, everything is there and you can see everything that's going on. So uh, if I wanted to delete this, I could just click this and either mark it as complete, I could edit the task, I could change the due date, I could delete the task. So I have all of these things in here that are, um, again, editable and it's very fluid so you don't have to be worried of what's happening in your business. Everything is there and you can see everything that's going on and it keeps things nice and organized for you. Now, the other thing that you're probably going to see is if I go into the dates and tasks section here. Oh, that email was already sent, actually. So if I go into here, uh, you can see here this email was actually sent. Now, why was that email sent? It shows it's sent here. That was sent because if I go back in here into settings and go into automation, into lead workflows, and into this one, it was sent because it says one day after the inquiry date, send this email. However, the inquiry date was in the past. So this would have been a good example of me applying something and I should have checked that off in the workflow because it would have now sent the email. So this would have worked if I had auto applied it, but obviously in this case I didn't, I did it manually just to illustrate to you. So I'm gonna close out of that and go back. Maybe one of the things that I will show you now is if I go and add a new lead, if you remember I had default workflows turned on for wedding leads. So if I go ahead here and add a new wedding lead and make sure that we have shoot type up here as wedding, as soon as I add this, it's going to apply that workflow to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this to come in. And there, now we can actually see the workflow has been applied. It's been automatically attached. Now we can see that email that's gonna be coming out in a day. So again, this is where I can click this. I can edit the email. I can reschedule the email. I can delete the email. Everything is in there and I can now organize it all in here. And what I was trying to illustrate to you earlier is if I click on the emails section here, you can see that there's this email here that's scheduled to go out and it currently says manage by task because the workflow is gonna send that automatically when that date and time comes. So if I go again also here into dates and tasks, I can see all these things that are gonna happen. And so that's how you uh, quite simply apply a workflow into either a lead or a shoot. There's a few different ways to do it. 
uh, but it's very simple to do it. And again, you have full control so you can still see what's happening. You can still see when things are going out, when things are due, you can check them off, you can defer them, you can delay them, you can delete them, you can edit them. So again, automation isn't something that you have to be scared of. Once you understand the mechanics of how automation works in Sprout, very simple to build and very simple to apply and add into your business.